Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I would like to welcome you to my stop on the not too shabby lovely fall hop and giveaway. I will be sharing a look at the September box of the month kit and making a fall themed card. And guess what? I designed one of the products in this month's kit so I can't wait to share that with you and use it in today's video. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. It is the first of the month, which means it is time for a new box of the month kit from Not Too Shabby. And this month has a fall theme and I absolutely love it. Not only are there adorable images and fabulous products, but I love the colors in it. They're just kind of different and unique. And you'll see that as I share with you a look at each of the products. And like I mentioned before, I even designed one of the products in this month's kit. Now, when you're done with my video, I hope that you'll hop along to everybody else in the hop and then you can be entered to win a $25 gift card to the Not Too Shabby shop. You can read more about how to enter in the description box below, but basically you'll click on the hashtag, hashtag N2SLovelyFall, and you'll visit all of the videos that come up when you search for that. Once you've done that, then you can enter the raffle copter link, which should be in everybody's description box, but if you can't find it, it will be below. And then Jamie will announce the lucky winner later on this month. You have until September 7th to hop along and be entered to win. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the kit before I get started on today's project. This month, there are two stamp sets included in the kit. Both of them are fall related and you get a four by six and a six by eight. So it's almost like having three four by six stamp sets. Here is a quick look at them, but up on screen now, I will give you a better look at each of them. One of my favorite things about the Not Too Shabby Box of the Month kits are always their ephemera packages. I just love these to either make note card sets or just kind of spice up the cards that I like to make. They're a great way to add an image with color without having to pull out your markers or your colored pencils. Again, I will show you a picture here on screen of all of the pieces laid out. Next in this month's kit are two paper packs. You get a slimline paper pad, which the pieces are four by nine, and you get a variety of glitter look and solid color papers in here. And I am loving kind of the blues and the mauves and the purples going down to a deep purple and then shades of brown. Here's a little look at what each of those look like. The second paper pad is called Lovely Fall and it has leaves and pumpkins and there's even some scenery pages that would make a very fun slimline or maybe square card or a framed piece. Jamie has also included a little baggie of sequins. These are kind of a clear holographic, a light blue and a brown, which goes perfect with this month's papers. And now the moment some of you might've been waiting for, let's take a look at what I designed for this month's kit. 
I'm going to keep it still just a little bit of a surprise, but what I designed was a background stencil to go along with the fall theme. When Jamie reached out to me, I was like, oh yes, please, I would love to try to design this. And when I saw the rest of the kit, I noticed how, you know, there were some like knit patterns and sweaters and it was fall and everything looked cozy. So I went online and I kind of looked at what other knit stencils were out there because I didn't want to like create one that was already available. And I also looked at knitting patterns to get an idea of things besides like cable knit or your standard ones. So I found an image and it almost reminded me of knit diamonds. Hence, the knit diamonds background stencil was born. This is a six by six background stencil. And if you do need longer than six, this is a repeatable pattern. I thought that this just went with the cozy feel of the kit. Now there will be a handful available of these outside of the kit, but if you want to ensure that you get one, you'll wanna go ahead and purchase the kit, which I do have linked in the description box below. You kind of get a discount on all of these items together and then if you sign up for the monthly subscription, you get an even bigger discount. I hope you're gonna be inspired today by the way I use my stencil and the rest of the items in the kit. As I do start that process, I will let you know if I bring in any other products or tools, but as always, you can let me know in that comment section below if I leave you with any questions. Let's get crafty. To get started on the card today, I did the ink blending. I held my piece of craft cardstock in place with some blue painter's tape, and I used a blending brush along with a sand colored ink. I just wanted a very kind of muted, monochromatic look for this background piece. Once I thought I had everything covered, I did peel back the stencil a couple times to double check. And once I had inked in all of the areas, my piece was ready and off camera, I did cut this down just a little bit. Next, I brought in my Misty and I stamped the focal point, which was a piece of off-white cardstock that I die cut off camera. The sentiment went in the bottom center and it reads thankful, blessed, pumpkin obsessed. And then I stamped one pumpkin centered above that and I inked the sentiment up with a sepia ink and the pumpkin up with the sand ink that I had done the stenciling with. After that was stamped, I moved the piece over in the Misty and I stamped two more of those pumpkins up at the top one to the left and one to the right. And for these two, I did double stamp it so the image was a little bit darker. And you might be wondering why I did this and didn't do any masking, but that will all make sense here in just a second. I will actually be paper piecing that middle pumpkin and I just wanted that on the label piece so I knew where to place it later and place those other two pumpkins. I stamped the pumpkin onto the blue plaid paper and then I stamped it onto a craft card stock making sure to focus on the stem. Once the parts of my pumpkins were all stamped, I fussy cut both images out with a pair of fine tip scissors, and then I glued the stem onto the pumpkin base. I let that sit for about five minutes before moving on. After that was all dry, I could put my card together. I will be placing everything on a top fold craft card base. And the first thing I did was put my focal point onto the inked piece. Now you'll notice a little bit is hanging off and I just brought in my small trimmer and sliced that down. I then adhered all of the cardstock and pattern paper pieces together onto the card base. And then for the pumpkin, because I wanted it to pop up off there a little bit, I brought in some small foam dots and added three to the back. I did decide to add some sparkle before calling this card finished. So I brought in the sequins from the kit and I added three of the brown ones in a triangle shape around the focal point. And here's a look at the finished card. Okay. 
I hope you enjoyed getting to see that newest not too shabby kit and seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. And now I have an extra special surprise for those of you who watched until the end of the video. In celebration of my very first product, I would like to give one away to a lucky subscriber. Here in just a minute, I will ask today's QOTV or question of the video. And if you are interested in being entered to win, what you'll need to do is answer the question, what is your favorite season and why? You do have to have both of those parts and this part is super important. You must include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV in your answer just like you see it on screen now. The reason is when I go to select the winners, I will filter them by that hashtag and only select the people who have added that because I know that they are interested in winning the stencil. This is open to my subscribers who are 18 years or older, and this will be USA or international. You will have until September 8th to leave that comment below with that hashtag, and then that next week I will be back to announce the winner. Thank you again so much for stopping by, and until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.